my name is Morello Kane, and it is the Hair Debate Show. Yes, our topic of today is Love Jones of Cosmetology and Hair. We're going to be speaking with the partners, okay, of the partners of the wives that are hairstylists. And so I tell you, um, because this industry can be so demanding, so we're going to find out how demanding it is on the family. And so definitely you want to stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. They hear a debate where we debunk, debate, and discover all things here. Welcome back. My name is Morello Kane, and I am the brand master of Morello All Things Hair Media, author of Seven Love Languages of Hair, and the host of the Hair Debate Show. Okay, so let me introduce my fabulous panelists to you all. Okay, I have to my right, Amanda Nicholson. Okay, a family and marriage therapist, all right, all the way from Atlanta. And we have with us Dr. Donna Ario, whoa. And she has her doctorate in human sexuality. And we have Miss Tiffany Allen. Okay, she is an instructor for over 23 years, which is absolutely amazing, Tiffany. And then also too, she is a master, master cosmetologist and salon owner of House of Vandals in McDonough. So give it up to my panelists. Woo! Okay, so today we are going to be speaking to the partners. Okay. And so now you guys, you know, being that you counsel individuals, mm -hmm. all right, so you understand how, you know, when it comes to this industry, how it can truly affect when you're talking about time, when you mm -hmm. talk about sacrificing that, you know, when you talk about what a partner, what their partner is giving to this industry. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of feelings that they may, you know, endure and whatnot. So we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And so now, ladies, okay, the Love Jones of cosmetology and hair. So now, Miss Tiffany, okay, with you being an instructor for over 23 years, I'm sure you have seen students, okay, starting out in this industry, as well as with you also, too, being a salon owner, you have um, individuals that, that has worked in your salon for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And so now, would you say that you have seen their um, profession being affected by this industry? Definitely, definitely. I have a husband myself. Um, I've seen a lot of the sacrifices that he has made for me um, yes. as far as taking care of the kids when I'm having to stay late oh in work God. or <laughs> um, going to one job to the next. Mm -hmm. In this industry, we always seem to pick up an extra. Uh, you you, you better tell it. <laughs> so, um, he would definitely always be there for the kids. My husband works 12 hours a day. Wow. And sometimes he comes right in and starts taking care of the kids so I can get ready to go where I need to go and do what it is I need to do. He always helps me get my creativity out. He never oh, makes I love that. Oh, that's beautiful. So that's the one thing I can say. I have seen a lot of people in the industry split over this industry. Uh, you better say, yes. It's all about having the perfect partner for you because we're very creative. Um, I just think as women of color, we're creative, period. We like to take care of people, and yes. it's just things we like to do. So you definitely have to have that right balance. You know, because this industry can be very demanding. And, and so now, so now, okay, so now, Amanda, mm -hmm. now you being a therapist with family and whatnot, so when it comes to having a demanding type of career, right? How could that truly affect an individual, you know, in their family life? And, you know, what is, how, it could, because what I wanted to do is, one is address the simple fact of when it comes to our industry, right. to me, we're, you know, we don't get the respect in our industry that we should. And, and, and we are sacrificing so much. It's affecting our life, livelihoods. Right. Okay. And so now, um, how can... You know, one, you know, create that balance. I think what's most important, as like Miss Tiffany was saying, that she has a supportive partner. 
Okay. And a lot of times, like, when we first get into relationships, people say, oh, you're a stylist, or you do this, or um, they know you have a demanding lifestyle. Okay. And people expect sometimes, like, oh, once we get married, they're going to slow down and yeah, uh, okay. do all of these things, and they have to understand how <laughs> passionate you are about your work. And if you're passionate... Oh, you better talk about that passion. Mm. <laughs> if you're passionate about you your about work yes. and you have the right partner, they will also be as passionate about your work and what you do and yes. for you to be successful. And I think that's one way to find that balance as well as knowing, having a partner that knows how passionate you are, but also you as the stylist or the clinician, because... Anybody in the helping profession has a very demanding job. Yes, they do. I feel yes, like do. you also have to remember that while you want your partner to support you, you still have to be there for your partner. Okay. So one thing that I would tell my clients mm -hmm. is to make sure that you make time for your passions, but also your passion has to be your relationship so oh, that wow. you can find the balance between the two. That, that's so true. the that's love you true. show for your career, you have to also give that love to your partner if you want them to be there and support you. Because if you aren't giving them attention, the, uh, mm, it ain't going to work. The, absolutely. Uh, and then it starts yeah. seeking it elsewhere. Yep. Uh, <laughs> which is, touch on that, Dr. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you are disconnected from your partner because y'all don't spend any time together. Mm -hmm. So the time is so, important. Yeah, that Very. time. And, you know, those things can build resentment. If there's okay. resentment, your sex life will suffer. Yes. Okay, wow. Okay. People don't want to think about that. And sometimes what, what we see is, okay, there's been now an increase in sexual activity. Yep. But that's because y'all are trying to save your your partnership. You're not, right. you're not communicating with it, with one another in a real way. Right. So now it's just, it, it became just about the sex. And okay. the problem is that people treat sex as a Band-Aid. Yup. Okay. And they think okay. that as yeah. long as the sex remains good, then the relationship must be good. Well, well now no. the word does say often. <laughs> <laughs> the word, the, the word, word does say often. The word says <laughs> often, but it is not a is not what fixes anything. Yeah. You can't fix anything without proper communication. Okay, so I love if that. you feel Absolutely. like if you feel like I am only my attention is only towards my work, but I'm not giving you any attention or the mm -hmm. attention you feel like you deserve or what you feel is adequate, I don't know that unless you talk to me. Okay. And there's no amount of sex that is gonna lessen the resentment that someone feels right that they never have your attention. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, I tell you what, we are going to come back with you because there are some things that we have to dig a little bit deeper before we just bring on the partner that's going to just set everything straight, okay, <laughs> on how he is affected in this industry. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Okay, so thank you guys for joining with us. And we have some things that we are going to dig a little bit deeper because you know what? Dr. Donna said some things. And I have to say, I, I, I mean, I agree to a certain extent, but, I, you know, because, because, again, when it comes to our industry, you know, I don't think that she truly understands. But now, so, Dr. Donna, when you mm -hmm. say that, you know, when it comes to <laughs> – the communication. Mm -hmm. and, and so and, and this is just what I'm saying. Because now in our industry, you know, we we're spending a lot of time, a lot of hours. And so now, and let me just say consumers truly don't understand that a lot of times we can't stick by a nine to five or ten to six or whatnot. So they may need extended hours. So we may be coming in earlier, we may be staying late. You know, some people are working up to like 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Not to say that you should, but many individuals, because in our industry, could be so up and down. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree, Miss Tiffany? Yes. Uh huh, go ahead. So, the one thing I do say is that your partner has to be your friend. Mm. So, I think that if me okay. and my husband was not together, he'd still be my friend and he's someone that I would go to for advice. Okay. With that being said, the reason I say that is because. I think as women, we're so strong, we tend to forget that we have a partner and we make decisions yes. without consulting yeah. that partner. Yes. Um, so, like, say for me, I may take on an extra task or a job and I haven't discussed that with him and I forget that he needs time too. Not just with me, but sometimes by himself from mm. doing things mm -hmm. that he has picked up yep. right. for me. Yes. So, 
um, you have to go back to make sure that's your friend. And when we have friends, we take care of our friends. They're mm. our friends. So in order for him to be my partner, my husband, my lover, he has to be my friend. And I need to make sure I respect that. I like that she just said <laughs> your partner has to be your friend. Yes. And if you are being a good friend, good friendships have reciprocity, mm -hmm. which means that you picking up those extra shifts, but you didn't talk to your friend the, uh, who's okay. expecting you home at a certain time. <clears throat> right, who's you're right. expecting certain some things from you. Yes. You know you did wrong. Mm -hmm. When you decided okay. that you're going to do X, Y, and Z, but okay, you had well, to talk to your ex. Okay, now that is true, but now let me just say this. Okay, so now wearing many hats that we do. Okay, mm -hmm. because again, it's not just styling the hair that some people may think, oh, are you playing? Like, we're playing with dolls. It's, it's, okay, so now we are salon owners. <laughs> <Not dolls>. Okay, <laughs> because they, they tend to think that like we, we just, you know, in La La yeah. Land. But we are salon owners. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, now, be it, especially as a female, the husband being the head, mm -hmm. okay, of the house. Okay, so, but now being a salon owner as a woman, you wearing the high heels. I, I'm just saying, so, 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 you, you, you know, I'm just saying you're upright. Right. You're upright. You're upright. <laughs> okay, and, and just being that, and just in being that, you know, it's like you're, you're making decisions, you know, and, and, and because you're in your salon setting, you're in your business. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, oh, I got this going on. Oh, I need to. Because, again, your thoughts are to grow the family. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, you, it, it's about growth. So that's where your thoughts are. So it's like, okay, oh, I got this to do. I got that to do. And so, so then you can have your growth. Okay. You can have as much growth as you like. And if you refuse to communicate, you can have no husband. Well, but, you just, know, but you know. Okay, now I think that the communication is well. Okay, yes. But. <laughs> But, you better talk to your husband. You better talk to your partner. That speaks to boundaries as well, right? Exactly. And having that conversation about boundaries because, like, can, is it okay if I call you Miss Tiffany? Or Okay. So, like, Miss Tiffany was saying, like, to let her husband know um, or for her to be conscious of the fact, like, he needs alone time. So if Absolutely. we're married and we're having kids, you're helping me with my vision, and you're helping me grow, when do you yourself get the opportunity to grow That's as right. an individual? That's and right. it's like, okay, at work, yes, you do wear the high heels. You are in charge. Mm -hmm. But when you get home, it's supposed to be this equal balance of energy, however your relationship dynamic is set up. You know, <laughs> there should be an equal balance of energy, and that energy is we have boundaries. We discuss, um, we discuss. Okay, what's going on today? Mm -hmm. um, do you need help? Or do you need a break today? And I think that's important because yeah, you're gonna make some. Um, you got some choices to make. Yeah, you're gonna have some quick decisions. Yeah, quick decisions yeah, I, to make at just, work. Right. But at the same time, <clears> when <throat> you make that quick decision, you have to also say, "Oh, hey, babe, I may have to stay late. Is that Absolutely. will that be okay? Um, will you be able to handle X, Y, Z if I do stay late? Okay. Because mm -hmm. that that causes the strain. Now I got I had plans. I had tickets to the Falcons game tonight and now all of a sudden you got to stay late but who watching the kids right you're, you're, yeah. you're absolutely right you're yeah. absolutely to right be an actual partnership yeah like people talk about emotional dumping that can happen within the context you know like you you got all this business stuff that's going on at work you done brought it home you just dumped it at their feet but if there's no reciprocity that's when it's dumping otherwise right. it's just an exchange okay so i'm saying that yes you should grow and that goes for anyone with any type of business so you, you're, you're wearing your high heels, you're doing your daggone thing, communicate with your partner, whoever they may be, because it does not, what, what does the Bible say? It does not do to gain the world and lose your soul. So okay, if, now you better quote you that thing. If you are trying to get to a space within your business, <laughs> yes. and you want your partner to be there, how can your partner be there if you leave them behind in your desk? If you right. treat them absolutely. like your maid, and just expect or your them assistant. to do your bidding. Exactly. <laughs> You're right. You I'm are like, absolutely right. There has right. to be reciprocity. There has to be communication. Right. Otherwise, you can have your business. You can elevate your business, and you could be by yourself. Absolutely. Because oh, if your well, partner is happy, they ain't going to have no no problems helping you elevate. Exactly. Right. Yes. I'm like, I ain't build my therapy business by myself. Right. I have a partner that is supportive. Okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, no. Oh, go ahead. I think that is perfectly correct. 
but I do think it's a two-way street. So I always tell my husband, you're not watching your kids. You're taking care of your kids just right. like the, the, I do. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, at the same time, I have to learn how to be a boss in my industry and not be the boss in my marriage. You better say that. But I also have to let my husband know that just the home things are not my responsibility Ooh. just because I'm a Hello. Oh, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I ain't got no. <laughs> like, whatever your dynamic is in your home. That's why so I say equal. If you are the one that does the cooking and the cleaning, if your partner's the one that does the cooking and the cleaning, or if y'all do a 50-50 split, whatever that looks like, you have to make sure that your home is taken care of and not in place yes, of your true. business mm -hmm. or vice versa. Yeah. So if you're saying that you want to grow your business, you also got to think about how do you want to grow your home. Don't think about mm -hmm. your business goals yeah. and forget that you got a whole husband. Mm -hmm. a, a whole husband. <laughs> Or a whole wife. Or a whole husband and wife. Don't leave your partner behind in your dust while you over there being bossed up <laughs> over there. Problem. You be bossed up over there, you're going to be bossed up by yourself if you don't think about home as well. So I'm not saying that you've got to do the work of, oh, let me just cook clean. Like, I'm not saying that you have to take care of them. They're a whole okay. wrong individual. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm exactly. That while you're doing the work that you are trying to do, while you're trying to grow the empire that you are trying to grow, remember that empires usually are built with partners. Right. And, and they are. But partners must also, too, understand, you know, the demands that we have in our industry. Mm -hmm. And again, that because we love what we do, we can't be, you know, we can't be at fault mm -hmm. for, for loving something that we do. And because it's, it's almost like, okay, you love what you're doing, you're not really working. Uh, you you know, and so it's just like, okay, understand that I it, this is a job for me, right. you know, as much as I love it, you know, but I am putting forth the efforts to work, and it is demanding. But that just goes back to when you first um, start a relationship with somebody, mm -hmm. they should be able to acknowledge up front. Uh -huh. how demanding your work is. Yes. Like, that should be a conversation. They should already know that, okay, if I get with this person, this going to be X, Y, Z. Work is very important to them. Mm -hmm. What they do is very important to them. It's just like um, Dr. Donna has completed her dissertation because she a doctor. But it's just <laughs> like, like I'm working on mine right now, and it's very demanding. It's very emotionally taxing. And if you don't have somebody who also – this is what I always tell my students, who also has goals of their own, it's mm -hmm. hard for them to appreciate how much work you put into Absolutely. your passion. So Absolutely. if you are trying to have that growth at home and in your work, your partner has to also appreciate that hard work that you put in, and they have to understand, and vice versa. Get people who bout business if you bout business. You got to. But don't be coming up at the start of your relationship with <laughs> lies. Right. Yeah, right. Okay, I'm okay that's your home now. Y'all uh, uh, focus here. Th yes. Okay? <laughs> Do not come up in your relationship with lies. You have to keep that same energy. Yes, I so agree. If you start off talking about some I'm Betty Crocker homemaker. Hello. <laughs> I stay home. I have things I want to do, but it's just a hobby. Right. And I don't really want to take it nowhere. They're going to treat you like you don't really want to take it nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to wonder why you all of a sudden working 12, 13, 14 hour days. Exactly. So you're going to have to keep Absolutely. that same energy. So if you know you have goals that you want to achieve, your partner needs to know. Be Absolutely. truthful with them and be truthful with, with yourself. yourself. Now, and if you spend all your time lying to yourself, you know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to be with nobody, and you need to sit down. With one of us. Well, I think immediately. I, I, <laughs> yes, well, I tell you what. We are coming right back because um, <laughs> we're going to bring on, okay, a partner of someone that is actually in the industry. So let's just hear from the horse's mouth. All okay, right. that's just the way how I like to do it. Let's just see. And so we will be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you for joining back with us. And we have our guest today. Okay, so now this handsome young man on the end here would happen to be my mate, my husband. Okay, Sean O'Kane, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> now, be, be truthful. Uh oh, we are going to dig in him, people, today. And so, 
And so I have to say, now let me just say, Sean and I have been married for 13 years. Mm-hmm. And um, 13 years. And so um, we actually, we, I was actually in this, I was in corporate when we met, but um, actually had a business. And so he knew my desire was to be in his industry. And um, and so he truly, you know, met me in the beginning of, you know, being in the industry and kind of going into this thing here. And so, um, so Sean, honey. Yeah. Okay, so now let's let's talk about how demanding this industry is. Would you actually say that, you know, this industry has been um, what do you think about this industry? So let me just start off like that. I think it's a great industry. Like you said, we started from ground level up. So it's been a good ride. It's been a good ride so far. So good. Okay. Okay, Sean. Thanks for joining us again. So what are some issues you think um, ha- that should be addressed for or talked about when it comes to coupling with somebody who is in the hair industry? Well, like you said before, um, it takes a partnership. Mm-hmm. So you have to discuss with your partner different types of schedules, different mm-hmm. types of events that they may take on prior to the event, you know, be, um, coming. Um, just discuss with your partner and make sure that they're aware of the different type of avenues that you're choosing to go on and that the scheduling, you know, evens up where what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes you may double book or you may overschedule something with your partner, who is your partner that's supposed to be helping you. But it put a strain on them because maybe they had some to plan and the schedules collide, they clash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, something you said stood out to me. Mm-hmm. So you talked about the strain that can be put on. Mm-hmm. I want to talk a little bit more about that strain, but I'm also <laughs> asking this question okay, okay. with uh, you don't have to talk about your strain. <laughs> you can talk about That's your so- friend. <laughs> I ain't trying to get you trouble. Yeah. Let's talk about Let's it. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Yes. I mean, okay, girl, I'm going to put your business on TV. Hey, hey, let's talk about it. <laughs> okay. So tell me about this strain. What does that, that, that strain look like on a day-to-day basis? Well, on a day-to-day basis, I would say just with scheduling. Mm. With scheduling versus work. Mm. Because, you know, upon us starting this career right here, um, we basically start off as my rapper and a stylist basic stylist Mm -hmm. and then as time progressed you know it got more and more demanding so in return you know she needed me more and I was willing you know willing to help so in return I just started working nights to be able to help her during the day because a lot of things that she had to do was you know for during the daytime that she needed help with so Mm -hmm. that's why I changed my schedule and to ensure that everything was level with her during the daytime well y'all hear that okay but sacrifice Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> but you know what? Now, in my position, I would feel guilty. I, I hated to call and say, because you you know, Miss Hiffany, when you say, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'll be done in about an hour. Mm-hmm. That hour will lead to two to three. <laughs> mm-hmm. And quick, because you kind of lose track of time. Because you're into what you're doing. That's mm-hmm. true. So one thing I want to know, um, hitting on that a little bit, is, what is a non-negotiable for you when you cut the line? And you, God, you better ask that question to Miss Tiffany. You know, we got to sit and talk about that. What is one thing that is really a non-negotiable for you? Because I know for my husband, he might let it go this weekend. We got something to do this Saturday, you know, or and he'll let it go. But then he'll get to the point to where he says, you know, Tiffany, we got to sit down and talk about this. We got to make some definite plans. Or he'll just say, no, you're not working this day, this day, and this day. We're going on a mini vacation and... So what is a non-negotiable for you? Well, probably a non-negotiable for me may be, um, like you said, we have anything planned to go out of town and she may have an event <laughs> or some scheduling coming up. I would be like, um, could you change the dates a little bit? Could you, could you put it up a little bit so that we could go out of town or so we could enjoy, you know, several moments, you know, stuff like that. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and just okay. keep it all the way real. Okay, so because let me just tell you how, because wh- what I do is, it's just that one client. You know that, that right you, before you right before you leave that one <laughs> that you can't say no to because it's something very important. Then you have that relationship with them. Okay, so you know, so you're just like, okay, I'm just gonna run in early and do this. And that dreadful thing of that one hour mm-hmm. turns into that hour and a half to where and and when you know, and when I look at him, he's just like, How many times? 
do I have to say that it does not work for us with you trying to work mm -hmm. right before we have something to do. But now it's hard to be like, you know, when you got that client, you're just like, well, you know what? Um, and, and, and I have to say for me, because when I talk to other stylists, they're like, honey, I just tell them no or whatnot. But, but I guess from my connection with my clients is, and then they have something going on, it's important to them, it's important to me. Okay, so, but, but that, I think that sounds like okay. boundaries. Yeah, oh, that sounds like oh. you are struggling with boundaries. Yeah, because really you're talking now. about how you pour into them. You're talking about how you care for them, well, what are you and that like means that? that they should also be pouring <laughs> into you. Uh, now that is and true. caring about you. And what's that the saying? True. You can't pour from an empty cup. You can't. Is, is that, is and you are not required like it. to set yourself <laughs> on fire like to keep others warm. Okay. Yeah. But now, so you that gonna is set true. your you gonna set your vacation and possibly your marriage on fire because this person just had to have their hair done today. And you're lucky because you have a partner that say no, we not mm -hmm. we not doing that because that means first of all he is confident in himself enough to say uh uh no. Mm -hmm. And loves you enough to speak up to say, no, we need to spend time together. Because some people Absolutely. just be like, oh, I'm tired of this. Just, you know, and, just go. Yeah, and, and they want to speak that up. That page, you burn out. Yeah. And, but you know what? Um, it is it's when it, it's a backfire. When you say, honey, I, I think when it's a backfire and when he proves to say, okay, now you see what just happened? And and I hate that feeling because it's like, <laughs> I, I, you know, because when <laughs> I. You when, with when, You know, but but in being real, I have to say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, like I know, I you know, but then it's that next time. So, but now, like you said, Doctor Donna, it's, it's creating boundaries. So, stylists, yeah. please hear this because again, it is a struggle. Now, would you, um, being a salon owner, and I know that you have stylists that work up under you, mm -hmm. do you see the importance of, of setting boundaries? You know, oh, definitely, I do. But not only with just stylists, I have to set boundaries with my students. Because oh, I'm girl. The, I'm the teacher that wants to bring my students home. If they are homeless, or if they haven't, or if they can't afford a field trip, I'm paying. Or if they wow. Don't have food, I'm paying. Or, you know, anything that I feel like would help them get to that next level and keep them pushing, I do it. And sometimes they scam on me, you know, or it couldn't, it's not true what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And my husband's always like, I tell you, my you can't do this sick. for everybody, or you can't do that for everybody. But, it's just something in me that, I mean, it's almost like God says, you just do your part, don't worry about the rest. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So even if it's not true, you're still doing your part. Mm -hmm. and that's just how I feel. But my husband, he's not like that. He's always like, let me research it first. Let me look them up. Let me yeah. Look them up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Like, we're not giving them this. Let me look at this. Let me look at that. You know, so that's how he kind of does. And it but helps me. you yes. in doing that. And yeah. You know, like taking people for their word. from things because. I have gotten burned in situations uh, well, like well, that. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, because I want to see and know how you have been burned from that so others can understand, too. So I tell you, stay tuned. We will be right back. Miss Tiffany was just discussing now how she's been burned and how this was a topic of conversation between her and her husband. So I would I would truly like to see what how it or what that was about. Well, I can say recently, um, just a few nights ago, I had a young lady that I was conversating with about mm -hmm. coming and getting in beauty school. And so she told me that she was homeless and that her and her kids wow. didn't have food. So immediately, it's 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, honey, I need you to wake up. Wow, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. we need to go take them food and this and that. Absolutely. But she also had put it on Facebook. So a lot of people were wow. wanting to give her money. She kept saying that she didn't have cash app. She didn't have a bank. She just wanted you to message her the money through Facebook. She okay. wouldn't give an address of where she was. My husband kept saying, I just don't feel comfortable just sending money. So after, can we just bring food? But she didn't want me to bring physical things. Mm. She wanted the money. Wow. So that was one thing he helped me. Okay. Not a whole to do. Red okay. Red. Yeah. Mm. Other yes. times it's been where I'll let stylists come in and work um, and they'll say, Well, I'm in the process of getting my license. Okay, and yes. Just because I'm a master cosmetologist, mm. you know, like they can work you on the You guys don't get that license. <laughs> and then yes. I have to work. I 
can't leave you in my shop and I have three or four other jobs to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. or they don't show up and then I'm stuck with their clients and my clients too. Oh, Absolutely. Wow. Um, you know, our, they don't have tools and I'm buying them tools trying to help them get started. And he always has to tell me to let's roll it back in. Mm. Ooh, but so this whole thing really turned into a conversation about boundaries. Yes, yeah, I said. No, I mean, I, it, I, it, I, yes. I, well, <laughs> and, and it is because in our industry, but you know what? And that's the reason why this needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. Because, again, in our industry, we we have professionals that is um, on Facebook asking for money. Yes. We have professionals that cannot afford their tools. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, professionals that's not operating as a professional. Mm -hmm. So you guess what, professional? You guys need to understand that when it comes to our industry, we have to treat it as a profession. Right. Okay, and so with that, it's all been on the same accord in charging prices, mm -hmm. you know, um, setting know boundaries. Word. Yes, ma'am. Go, go, go again with it. Know your word. <laughs> you better say that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Fifteen dollars for a cut in color because it don't sound right. That, no. Right, exactly. And so, but that's again, we're not operating within no boundaries. Would you also agree? Yes. I, okay. Yes. I definitely believe it has to be boundaries set in this industry because another thing. You can have a situation where it's sort of like you can count your eggs before they hatch. Mm. Like you may have a client that's coming in for a, a, a sew-in, a, a treatment, and you may count that client, and then that client mm -hmm. come and counsel, and then you are stuck with thinking that you was going to make X amount today. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But then that cl client ends up um, rescheduling or what it may be, and then you lose right then. So Absolutely. I feel that it needs to be some boundaries on that for one, and also – it needs to be a boundary. Oh, run it down. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> run it down. Run it down. I also need to be a boundary when it comes to clients not keeping their scheduled appointments. Um, yes. A lot of times clients schedule, and they're, I, I have seen them probably an hour, two hours late for appointments where we might have had something planned, but it got pushed to the side because mm -hmm. Ralph made it still taking that client that was mm -hmm. late. But it was no repercussion, nothing done because of that. And I think that it should be a charge and a fee for clients that tend to come as late as that. Didn't I just talk to you about that yesterday? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that, I'm just saying. Yeah, if she People will cost. treat you exactly how you allow them to. And yeah. that is true. So if you allow Absolutely. them to show up two hours late for their appointment, they're going to keep doing it because there ain't, no, there ain't no consequences no to problem. it. Absolutely. It's like, what it, what it right. matter? Absolutely. And it's just like people, they don't think, that you have something else to do. So they probably think, that is true. oh, she got other clients, so when I get there, it'll be okay. Yeah. But it's just like in our industry, like being clinicians, when people don't show up for appointments, it's kind of like, w one, if, especially if you're my only client for that day, like I could have been at home, I could have been working on my business, I could have been spending Absolutely. time with my family, Absolutely. with mm -hmm. myself, Absolutely. and people don't account for you as a professional, as a person, or somebody with, a husband or a wife and kids and all that stuff so all of you out there mm, who seek yeah. services yeah. you need to be mindful that the people who are offering you services are also humans we don't just work 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 exactly. we have lives y'all students too but that's a, for another video <laughs> <laughs> but i love what you were saying because yeah. that's why i've had to implement so many different things in my business yeah because my time was being infringed upon in ways that i was like okay I can't see you at 9 p.m. Right. Uh, Absolutely. You know, that is true. That is true. A girl likes sleep. <laughs> right. So, exactly. um, I've had to implement things like a 48-hour cancellation policy. You cancel mm -hmm. before 48 hours or you are charged the full cost of your appointment. Absolutely. No Absolutely. call, no show. Same thing. No cost. Yeah. If Absolutely. you are more than 15 <laughs> minutes late, boo-boo, that counts as a no call, no show. Okay. So, there is no appointment and you still get charged the full cost. Okay. Now, Absolutely. we will have a conversation about it. I might try to swing you something the next time be like okay i'm gonna take like 10 20 dollars off okay your next appointment but we're gonna have to talk about your tardiness but i think that people forget that within the service industry yes that you are a person yeah but you also have to tell people exactly how it is that you are willing to be treated so we we're often interested in making sure that our money don't change that our uh, money stays the same because yes. there's so many ups and downs yeah exactly. however the bunny will come Mm -hmm. But you don't want people that don't want to be there. 
Those oh. are not your clients. Hello. Absolutely. So the people that want to show yes. up three or four hours late for an appointment are not your client. And mm -hmm. you gotta, you have to be willing to say that's a that's a hard no for me. Yeah. So right, I've had to right. break up with Set clients. Don't worry, I'm not gonna put your name out there. If you're watching this. <laughs> but um, I've had to. I, I was like, look. You can't be 20 and 30 minutes late to every appointment. So yeah. you let me know when you're ready to prioritize your mental health. If you're Absolutely. not ready, then you're not yes. ready. And that's okay. But you got to do the same thing in the hair industry. Yeah. And you're if right. you're not ready to get your hair done at 2 o'clock on Friday, like you said you were. You're right. Then you can push on, my baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Miss Tiffany. So I definitely feel like in our industry, no matter how much we charge, we're still never paid enough because people use other yes. services. Yes. So they may be getting their hair done, but they're telling us all about their problems. Absolutely. And trying to get free advice from us. <laughs> so they should be seeking <laughs> these ladies. That is true. That is true. <laughs> and then we come home with all their negative energy. Oh, aura. you better say that. So we have to learn how to rid ourselves of that. Wow. Another thing is, I'm also an esthetician and working with Ooh. a dermatologist. I noticed that she charges $145. Yes. If you don't cancel your appointment in 24 hours or if you're late. She charges you one hundred and forty-five dollars. It has wow. to be paid before wow. you can come back and see her. Wow. So I'm always yeah. telling my students, you know, make sure you're charging with your work. Now, be Absolutely. Worth, be worth the, what you're you worth. You better say that. You yes. Know, now that's true work. too. <laughs> <have> <laughs> There's millions of people in the world, so all those clients may not be your clients. Your Th that's clients true. are going to come. Stay in yes. your lane. Yeah. Yes. Be steadfast in all that right, lane. All right, Miss. And <laughs> just. Keep on what you're doing and don't waver because that's what some people are looking for, that waver. So they can and, and that, you're right. Um, you're right. Oh, I've been, mm -hmm. I've been moving like the wind. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. just like and the flag. Yes. And finish, you're right. Because we're almost like mama bears. You know, yes. we like to take care of everybody. <laughs> yes. So sometimes it's not all about the hair. It's just sometimes we want to make sure you're taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yes. When, again, they should be the, right here. And that is true. Like, you know, like we should just be here to be able to Just to service you. One thing they don't realize is that we do have our own lives. We and have and a that's family. true. That's true. Um, they're not willing to sacrifice for their family, so we can't be late because uh, they exactly. put it out there. Yeah. <laughs> they want us to be late. Be blasting on Facebook. Don't worry about what you have to do with your kids mm -hmm. and your family or just for yourself. You know, they want you to put that to the side, mm -hmm. but they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So we definitely have to. Mm -hmm. Wow. Great, great, great. I'm mean, gonna tell you, um, because you hit it right down the nail, Miss. Yeah. This segment has been absolutely phenomenal in addressing, you know, when it comes to this industry and the things that we need to talk about and strengthen. And we know that now it is setting boundaries and communicating. Mm -hmm. And because what we have to understand is that, again, in order for our consumers, for clients to deem our um, profession to be um, to to respect it as a profession, we first must do so mm -hmm. and walk yeah. into it. And so I truly get that. I understand it. Uh, my clients, I will be implementing that starting on Monday. Yeah. So okay, so now we have something that we would like to share. I know how you guys have checked out the display right here. Okay, so we're going to bring out who's responsible for this. Chef V. Woo! Okay, yes. All right. Hi. Chef Hello. V. Hi. Yes, thank you hey, so much Chef for being v. with us today. Okay, Chef V is the chef of the hair debate. Okay, and so what she has displayed here, please tell us what we have here because it's beautiful. Why, thank you. Thank you for having me today. We yes. have a lovely shrimp cocktail. Okay. okay. Yes, some good old shrimp with some vitamins mm. and minerals in it. Oh, I see that. Okay. Good old iodine. <laughs> Won't y'all taste a little and tell me what you think? Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's nice. I know I'm going to get my iodine in. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of protein, too. You know, shrimp is good in protein. You see, that's mm. protein for your hair and everything. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. okay. So I'm going to eat another one then. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so Let for you ladies. Grow. That feel that you know you don't want to do your protein treatment, then go ahead and just eat it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that you fight for your treatments, okay? Then go ahead and partake because truly having that balance from the inside, you definitely need to partake right. protein from the inside. Mm -hmm. We always think that you know, oh, I could just run and get the treatment, right? You know, or what can I put on my hair, you know, and whatnot. So having a great product does have a great ingredient, but then also too, what are you eating? Mm -mm. Make sure you check out that episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I tell you what, 
Um, we truly appreciate what you have here. Oh my God, it's absolutely amazing. And um, is there something else that you may want to share when it comes to? Oh, oh okay. Now the cocktail song. Did it, do you do anything with it? I see there's some lime I in it, and I little, taste it. A little lime juice in it and a little lemon juice to give mm. a little spice to it. And sometimes I do add a little garlic, but I didn't know if the panel liked garlic. And I'm a garlic fan. You know, uh, garlic okay. is good for you as well. It keeps away vampires. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you have gum after. <laughs> Don't be all up in somebody's face with those H words. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Well, thank you so much. Um, everything is absolutely beautiful. Well, thank okay, you. stay tuned. So, there you have it. It's been our segment. I would like to thank all of you, okay, our guests. Again, Sean O'Kane, thank you so much um, for just being, you know, just so supportive with me in this, in this vision behind the hair debate, because actually he's the one that came up with the name. I just want to plug you on that. Oh. And so, again, my name is Morello O'Kane. It's the hair debate, and this is the home where we debunk debate and discover all things hair.